Hi, this is Asterix and welcome back to my channel. So today we're going to be covering using UAD's Luna as a console with Logic Pro X. Now, in my testing of this particular DAW, um, I was quite pleasantly surprised to find that the actual audio control um, of the system is already quite um, elegant and refined. So it looks like Apple spent a lot of time in trying to truly understand what causes latency. And I found that I really didn't have to do anything. Um, and having Luna being attached to it really didn't have an add value other than uh, perhaps being able to use the some of the new plugins that are that are uh, Luna specific, like the Neve summing and the um, um, the tape saturation uh, effect, which is also available as a regular plugin, by the way. Um, the Studer eight A eighty or eight A eight hundred is available as a regular UAD plugin. Okay, so. Um, I was really pleasantly surprised by my findings. I have to admit that I haven't spent very much time inside of Logic and definitely not from a viewing it as a technical perspective um, in, in using it with audio. Um, I've opened it a few times and done some straight line recordings with it and that was pretty much it. <laughs> Um, so I'm really, really, really surprised by my findings. So I'm just going to kind of take you through, um, what I discovered. Um, I'm going to start with the audio settings. Um, so right now this is, um, logic without any Luna integration. And I'm just going to show you how things are set up in here. So I'm going to go to preferences and open up the audio, uh, preferences. Um, so I have the uh, Universal Audio Thunderbolt um, hardware interface, which is an Apollo 8 attached. Um, my buffer settings are always set at 512 in all of the DAWs that I use. Um, this is what I found that was interesting. All of these settings right here are what gives Logic its control over how it, it handles audio Um and it's also not, you're not able to turn any of it off. So um, when I try to disable all of it, um, it truly affects the overall um, functionality of the program. So I wouldn't recommend you go and change any of these settings. Um, the summing is absolutely, you can't turn it off. It's either 32-bit or 64-bit. Um, I was kind of surprised to find this. I don't remember seeing this before. Um, and maybe this was something that was added in a recent update. Um, and perhaps it's always been there. Maybe one of you logic users who are full-time logic users know when this was implemented, but I found that quite interesting that they added summing. Um, also the multi-threading, um, it is not, you don't have the ability to disable this either. Um, it's either playback tracks or playback and live tracks. Um, also the buffer range setting, um, it doesn't have an offsetting. It could either have it small, medium, or large. Um, the processing threads, it's set to automatic, uh, which you would really want to have it set at automatic unless you know for sure, um, how many processing threads you're going to need, which I don't think I would ever knew that. <laughs> um, but all of this goes towards, um, the overall, audio experience that you get out of Logic. And also under the input output assignments, I found that I can, I can change my output settings to my virtual port, which is 23 and 24. However, I, again, I didn't find any benefits in doing so. So let me sh kind of show you what I'm talking about with, with that. So I have an instance of my MPC open and I'm using the push as a um, way to uh, trigger the pads on it. And I'm gonna just grab this.
this is native, no Luna. Um, so I'm, I'm uh, quite pleasantly surprised um, by that finding that I didn't require Luna to be able to give myself better latency within logic. And again, my buffer is set actually kind of, it would be considered high, um, which is 512. Um, I found that using 512 was um, the most nominal setting that I could use to be able to bring in multiple um, instruments that have samples attached to them um, and have a smooth playing experience with those um, VSTs or with those instruments. Um, so I, I tend to use that, that uh, value in all of my DAWs, but uh, as you saw in the very first video, within Ableton, it's like the worst setting that you could use. And even if you moved it down to 64 um, samples, it was still awful. It was so awful that you couldn't really play in it, play it. So what this shows me, and I hate to say this, and I'm, I'm not being sponsored by any of these companies. And <laughs> at this point, they probably all hate me because I'm revealing things that they know that's a problem and they haven't spent enough um, research and design dollars or time to resolve. And it looks like Apple did uh, along with U uh, UAD. Um, and these are problems that have existed with computer recording since, gosh, since it started. Um, you would think um, that by now everybody, I mean, every company that makes DAWs would understand what causes latency and how to resolve it, but apparently that's not so. Um, but I'm, I'm seriously surprised that Apple took time out to really put some thought behind what happens and how, how to resolve it so that the application can be used um, the way that it's intended to be used, which is, you know, it's nice. I, I'm, I'm really super surprised. But if you still want to use, um, you want to use um, Luna in conjunction with it, uh, the only thing I found that you have to do is change your output settings to your virtual port assignment. And let's go over to Luna and I'll show you that. Right now, I don't even have Luna open, so I'm having to open Luna. Um, I'm using the, the standard UAD console um, when I was doing that drum finger drum test. So I'm opening up Luna now and I have a single instance of, of a file in there and it's my console that I've been using for everything. So this is the console. Um, and again, my new master port that I created is vir this virtual two, which is using virtual three and four which I uh, assigned to it uh, from the input output matrix. Um, it's using channels 23 and 24. So that's, that's really it. That's all I've done in Luna. Um, again, if you haven't seen the very first video, um, what I did was I created audio channels for all of my exterior devices, which are microphone, keyboards, um, my guitar, um, everything that has a, that needs a physical input. I created a audio track for them and I redirected the input ports for them to those audio tracks. And that's truly it. That's all you do. You have access to be able to use all of UAD's plugins, the Unison plugins, the channel strip plugins, everything that you're expecting to get out of your experience with uh, Luna's um, audio experience is there, um, including the Neve summing. And if you have the tape access to the tape uh, plugins, um, you have access to the tape plugin. I actually have been using the tape plugin on my virtual port, which is my master. And, <laughs> you know, I've used the studer before and at, on my master channel within Ableton. 
and it's just something a little different using it here this way. Um, if there's a single saturation knob control, which makes it super easy to use. Um, and it's, it's amazing. I, I'm blown away by the sound quality of Luna. Um, I haven't really found a lot of great value in the Neve summing yet. Um, maybe my ears are not quite attuned to the, to the harmonics that it produces. Um, so I haven't spent a lot of time with it. And uh, right now I'm in the trial mode on it. I'm not really sure if I'll end up uh, purchasing that one. Um, cause I think, uh, with the tape saturation and I have, um, the Fairchild plugin, which I use quite a bit. Um, it gives me that really nice warm analog sound that I really like, um, to add to my recordings. So not sure on the Neve summing, but it's, it's, it's a good thing if you're used to what it sounds like. Um, other than that, that's really it as far as the setup for Luna and how you set it up to use it with um, Logic. Um, you, of course, have the option of changing your track sources outputs to be able to directly point to that, that virtual port. But again, it's like, <laughs> why? You don't really need to because Logic natively has a beautiful and elegant audio control system already. So it's like, you're wasting your time. <laughs> so I'm, I'm, I'm seriously surprised by this. Um, and maybe I'll spend a little bit more time in Logic and getting used to the way that you do things in it. Um, it's just something about doing straight line recording. When you're used to using clip recording, um, it makes your workflow extremely quick, which is why I love Ableton so much. Um, at first, when I was first introduced to Ableton, I found it to be a little clunky, <laughs> but as you spend more time with it and you start using it more, you see the value in it, um, which is why I've become more accustomed to working that way now. Um, now, when I have to go to a linear mode and I see programs like, like Logic, where all of the expected editing controls are there for when you're working in a linear mode or there. It makes me not want to work with Ableton because there's some things about Ableton's, um, editing, um, editing window for the audio side, which is still, it's like you have to know a lot of keyboard commands. Um, and a lot of those things are not translated onto the push too. Um, so that's, that's pretty much it. <laughs> well, let me, let me stop my rambling rant, uh, about Dawes. And if you guys have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comment section. Um, I'm thinking about grabbing the demos for Studio One and FL Studio and seeing if I can, uh, work out the audio control stuff for Luna in there. Uh, I know that those programs are probably the same way as Ableton and, and Reason. So again, I'm as this started kind of as an experiment to see if I could improve uh, the latency that I was having uh, within Ableton. And it's become this big culmination of experiments on different DAWs to see if I could integrate um, the Luna um, recording system as a console replacement. And in doing so, I've found that there are some big, big, big differences amongst these DAWs and how they control audio. Um, so it looks like some of our, our DAW friends, our DAW developers, um, need to spend a little time and maybe uh, come together and talk to UAD and talk to the folks over at Apple and come to some sort of consolidated consensus about how to control audio. Um, it's 2020, guys. Um, we're all on these very high-powered machines, but we're experiencing the same things that we were experiencing back in the 80s when people started developing um, software to be able to record on the computer. Um, so that's just it. My rant, my thoughts... Um, again, I'm not sponsored by anybody and they probably hate me and will never sponsor me anyway. So it really doesn't matter. <laughs>
that's all of I have for now. Um, I'll see you guys later. I'm out. Thank you.